Retired Chief Justice Majid Koka takes us through the history of the Kenyan judiciary in his memoirs, The Doings, Non-Doings, and Misdoings of Kenyan Chief Justices since 1963 to 1998. The memoirs reveal a candid assessment of the vulnerabilities of Kenyan Chief Justices. Frail but firm and accompanied by his wife, Amida Koka, he invites us to his home where we are in for a rendition of his rich history in the corridors of justice. The 90-year-old Koka raggles us with the tales of how he rose from a resident magistrate in 1963 to the highest echelon of the judiciary and that year journey to the top. Uhuru is something quite different from what colonial days were. <laughs> You see, in colonial days, I would never ever become a chief justice. Never. Born in 1923, was destined to be a teacher and at the very best, an Asian school inspector. But as fate would have it, his father paid his school fees for him to join his brother in London to study law. From a teacher, they made me a visiting teacher, which meant going and inspecting schools, writing reports and all that. The second Asian Chief Justice to be appointed in the Kenyan judiciary, Coker graduated from Lincoln's Inn University, after which he joined his brother Said Coker as partner in his law firm. This is where he had first-hand experience in the legal world by representing Mau Mau through proper briefs. A revolution that started from British firms so many Kenyans face capital punishment. If you were found even with a bullet in your possession, you would be hanged, capital punishment. It was so, so severe at that time. Here both Koka and his brother, who also became an industrial judge, represented among them the famed Mau Mau leader, Warohio Itote, also known as General China. But uh, we managed, we managed to get so many acquittals in Mau Mau cases, so many of them. His was a face-to-face -face duel with prosecutors before the white colonial judges. When the agitation began to drive the colonial masters out of Kenya, an opportunity would open for him and two African lawyers, Sibi Okumu and Ogwin Skothek, to be appointed as resident magistrates. When they knew that Uhuru was approaching, the Europeans stopped coming. So there were vacancies, and then we got a chance to go out become judges, and uh, senior resident magistrates, then judges. He would go on to serve as a judge for 17 years before his appointment as the Chief Justice on 24 December 1994. He was immediately met with deeply entrenched corruption and laxity in the court system. The Mombasa Law, uh, law, law, Mombasa law Society had written to the Chief Justice to me that there is corruption in Mombasa. So I said, all right, if there's corruption. I sent one of the toughest judges there, Lady Angawa. I sent her and she put them right. As he looks back at the different periods from the colonial judiciary to the African run judiciary, he says things have changed drastically. We were very strict. You see, that thing came from the colonial, the Europeans. They were very strict, unforgiving if you made a mistake. I mean, a, a moral mistake. And he defends these memoirs, which have received some ascetic reactions from those in the law practice. I had to tell the people how the judiciary runs, how it was running at that time. Ironically, this former head of the third arm of government says he has been left to suffer since his retirement 15 years ago. Up to now, 15 years, not a single shilling has been added to my pension. It's the same amount. The cost of living has shot up. The members of parliament are hiking their <laughs> salaries and allowances. Surviving on a pension that is almost ridiculous today.